From ancient times to the present, war has brought serious consequences to human societies, so that human beings have always been endeavoring on limiting war to reduce its effect to protect human beings and the environment. What is the basis and origin of these limitations? Have you ever heard of international humanitarian law? International humanitarian law is part of public international law that consists of rules in times of armed conflict. IHL is also known as the Law of War, or the Law of Armed Conflict. Its purpose is to limit the effects of armed conflict and to protect persons who are not, or no longer, taking part in hostilities such as the wounded, prisoners of war, and civilians. Meanwhile, it is also the legal basis for the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement and other humanitarian relief organizations to carry out humanitarian relief work in times of armed conflict. The ultimate objective of IHL is to limit the effects of armed conflict rather than to regulate the causes and legitimacy. In the 19th century, Mr. Henry Dunant, the founder of the movement, advocated and promoted the concept of IHL in Europe, which a dozen countries adopted as the first Geneva Convention. With changes in time, technology, and forms of armed conflict, following by other Geneva Conventions and additional protocols, as well as other treaties, the IHL is to cover a wider range and protect various affected people in armed conflict. As of today, almost all countries have signed the Geneva Convention. How is IHL applied? IHL applies in international armed conflict and non-international armed conflict. IAC occurs when one or more states resort to the use of armed force against another state. NIAC are restricted to the territory of a single state and involve either governmental armed forces fighting one or more non-state armed groups or such groups fighting each other. IHL does not apply to internal disturbances or tensions. International humanitarian law covers two areas. First, to protect the soldiers and prisoners of war who have been taken out of combat due to injury or illness, and civilians making sure their life and dignity are treated humanely. Protected persons, including soldiers who are wounded, sick or shipwrecked, surrendered combatants, civilians, and prisoners of war. IHL specifically authorizes the ICRC to visit people detained due to armed conflict to guarantee their rights to food, shelter, medical care, and contact with their families. In addition, medical personnel, medical-related facilities, and transports will use the Red Cross, Red Crescent, or Red Crystal as protective emblems, showing that such persons and objects are protected by the IHL and should not be targeted by military attacks. Cultural property and natural environment are also protected under IHL. Second, to restrict the means and methods of warfare, such as prohibiting belligerents from using weapons that cannot distinguish between civilians, civilians and military equipments for attack, so as to avoid unnecessary casualties and long-term damage to the environment and human health. IHL also prohibits or restricts the use of conventional weapons which cause excessive injury or to have indiscriminate effects such as landmines, weapons that cause damage from non-detectable fragments, incendiary weapons, and prohibit weapons of mass destruction, such as nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons, and etc. The vision is to ensure that when armed conflict ends, human beings can return to normal life with their lives and dignity restored. As the originator of IHL, the movement has been committed to promoting the global development of IHL and making the conventions known to states, citizens, and armed forces. The Hong Kong Red Cross is also committed to disseminating IHL to the public. Only when more people understand, recognize, and implement IHL, the power of IHL can fully deliberate.